So okay guys, today's video I'm going to try to keep rather short. Today I'm going to be talking about Winget, what it is and how to use it. So with that said, Winget is essentially a Windows package manager, very much similar to the ones you can find on Linux. For those of you unsure of what a package manager is, think of it like this. It's a way to monitor, install, upgrade applications or uninstall applications all via the terminal. Now that's cool and all on Linux, but why would we want this on Windows? Well, for the same exact reason for why you'd want it on Linux, for autonomization. You can batch install applications, batch uninstall applications, check whether an application needs an update without having to hop through multiple windows on your system. Overall, it's a very powerful tool and I highly suggest you guys to look into it. But yeah, with that said, before we can even get to using this tool, we first of all have to open up a terminal. In my particular case, I'm using Windows PowerShell. You can easily get to it just by going to your start menu and typing in PowerShell, or you can do the thing I like to do, and that is right click the start menu icon, then click on Windows PowerShell. An even quicker way of getting to that is to use the hotkeys. So Window X and then PowerShell. Anyway, once we have uh, Windows PowerShell opened, we need to type in WinGet. You won't get exactly what I have here at the start. You'll get a prompt asking you to give it permissions or to accept its terms and services. Accept those and we're pretty much good to go. Now keep in mind, just like on Linux, a Windows Package Manager does have third party apps available. So be sure to check the credibility and do your research before installing just random applications because you never know whether or not they've been tested and verified or with whether or not they have issues. In most cases, most of the applications that you want to install on your system will be verified by the Microsoft Store or will install directly from the Microsoft Store. So those will generally be fine and safe. So to give an example, I'm going to type in win get install, then discord. Discord has a multiple different sources from which we can download from. So we'll be prompted on which one we want. In my particular case, I'd want the one from the official site, not the one from the Microsoft store. That's just how I roll. So to do this, you just left click, select the name, then right click to copy it. Then from here, we type winget install, then we can just paste the name in and then hit enter and that will begin downloading the program. But since I already got Discord on, I'm just going to cancel that right out. Also, it's good to know that when you install a program, most cases you won't have to click any pop-ups or anything like that. However, installing from third party, sometimes you will have to hit the occasional pop-up on screen, so keep that in mind. Also, in most cases with WinGet, when you type WinGet install in the application name, you won't be prompted for two sources. You'll be just installing the app right away, so keep that in mind. Also, it's good to know how to search for applications. You can easily do this by typing in WinGet search, then the application name. So let's say we want to find out if TeamViewer is available to download over WinGet. You can easily just do that, and it will search for various past where we can install TeamViewer from. Anyway, now that we know how to install apps, how to search for apps, how do we go about managing our apps and telling them whether to install an update or to just uninstall? To do this, we first of all have to type in win get list. Now keep in mind when you first run this command, it may take a minute or two to generate a list of all the applications installed on your system. So with that said, just give it some time to generate a list and it will generate that list faster each time it does so. But yeah, as you can see, I got a ton of applications installed on my system and not a lot of them are easily updatable through win get. So when you go to update an application, it has to be one that has WinGet next to it. Another useful tidbit of information to know is if your application has an update, right next to the left of the WinGet here, it will have the ID telling you what version of the update it's on and what version of the update you're on. So let's say we want to update the Windows 10 uh, Update Assistant. How would we go about doing that? All you'd have to do is left click, select all of it, right click, type in win get upgrade, and then paste it in. Then once you hit enter, it should begin upgrading the app. But keep in mind some Windows applications won't upgrade 
in this particular way. Some of them you have to install the upgrade over top of it, so you have to use the install command. You'll know this when it doesn't exactly work the way you intended it to. And great, every YouTuber's nightmare, I have a Windows update. No, I'm kidding, I'm just going to close out of this for now. Anyway, that's how easy it is to upgrade a program. It's just as easy to uninstall a program. So if I wanted to uninstall this, I would just type in uninstall, then hit enter. So uninstall, then enter. I'm not going to do that, obviously, because I'm kind of using that tool at the moment, but that's how that would work. Also, sometimes when you upgrade an application, you'll be suggested a source to download from. It's rare when it happens. You just select a source just like you would when installing an application, and that would begin updating it. Anyway, there are a lot of other features this program has to offer, but unfortunately, I got no import scripts available to show any kind of bulk installs or anything like that, so we're not going to be covering those features in this video. However, if you wish to know more about that, maybe I'll come back for a part two. But that's basically it for this video, and I hope it helped you guys out. I really like Winget overall, and I hope Microsoft keeps supporting it, because it, overall it's just a really cool, very useful tool, very low hassle, and it just gets things done. Anyway guys, that's basically it for today's video, and I'm gonna leave it off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. You'll soon realize that that package is not available on the Pac-Man default repository. Put in the game, turn it back on, and it'll let the game boot up.